God's house. Amen. Amen. I appreciate each and every one being here today. I pray that you've had a great and blessed week this week. And uh, just uh, very briefly, I'm going to, uh, there again, just, if you're here, if you're visiting us for the first time, if you would, just stop by the Welcome Center, fill out a visitor's card if you feel led to do that, and I'll have you a little gift there. If you're thinking about joining the church, been looking for a home church, we'd love to have you here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, and just, I'd love to talk with you more about that. And then, of course, we'd love to have you up here in this choir, too. Uh, we've got plenty more room up here. We can fill it right on up, and need be, we can put some more chairs out front here. Amen. So need to use that gift and talent for the Lord. With that said, just a few quick uh, updates on a couple of things. If you would continue to miss, uh, remember Miss Betty Woodruff, she has uh, stage four kidney failure. So please be in much prayer for her. Also continue to remember uh, Sister Marie Odom. She's at home, uh, recovering now after her surgery. Thank the Lord for that. And of course, continue to remember Brother Doug Hardy. Uh, he should be coming home today from my, what I've heard. So continue to pray for him. Uh, Lib Woody and Lib Wilmoth and so many others that have uh, sicknesses and bronchitis and COVID and this and that. So continue to pray for them and of course pray for all those that I know we have several that are still out, out and traveling on vacation. So just pray for them as they're out and about. With that said, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time and then we'll go look at our announcements. We've got a lot going on and we'll go through that and move on with the service. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you once again for another day for allowing us to be back at your house, Lord. We thank you, Father, for once again providing a place that we can come without, uh, Father, persecution, Lord. And Father, we just come here today, Lord, Father, not to just uh, fellowship with one another. We thank you for that. But Father, we come to uplift your name, Father, to praise your name because that's what coming to the church house is all about, Lord, giving you all the glory, Father. And all the praise, Lord, and all that we do, Lord. Father, we want to pray for these ones that I just mentioned, Lord. And you know each name as I mentioned them, Lord. But also, Father, those that continue to be on our prayer request list, Lord. But, Father, we also thank you, Father, for the many prayers that have been answered, Lord. And, Father, we know prayers that will be answered, Lord, in the days ahead. Because, Father, of your faithfulness and your mercy and your grace, Lord. We just pray, Father, that your will would be done in each one's life even now, Lord. We give you thanks and praise for today, Lord. And it's in your wonderful name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you got your bulletins very quickly, uh, we're going to move right along. Um, if you see that insert there, we'll just stop right there. Uh, Friday, August the 26th at 8 p.m., Tuesday, 11, 11 12, and 13-year-old youth class. They're going to be hosting an outdoor movie night. So bring your blanket or your lawn chair. Uh, there'll be food concessions. They'll be taking some donations for back-to-school supplies of any kind. And, hey, that's just come on out and enjoy a night of fellowship. So remember that, August the 26th. August the 27th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., that's our annual car wash, uh, free car wash, food, hot dogs, drinks, chips. Uh, if you got any yard sale stuff you want to give away, bring it up there, and we'll set it out. Is that correct? So remember that. Also, uh, I'll, be do I'll be on the radio, I guess. Uh, announcing all this, so be in much prayer for that. As I, they're going to do a recording in the morning, so remember that. Uh, so just thank the Lord for that. Also, uh, Saturday, August the 20th, at five, or I'm sorry, Senior Banquet, 62 and over. There's a sign-up sheet uh, at the Welcome Center. Uh, there again, need help setting up, serving, and cleaning up. There's a separate sign-up sheet for helping as well. And then uh, Saturday, August the 20th at 6 p.m., the Hee Haw Show will be following uh, the senior dinner. There's a sign-up sheet at the Welcome Center for that. Anyone that wants to participate, if you've got any questions, see uh, Renee uh, after the morning service. And then also Sunday, August the 21st, that's always followed by or that there. It'll be Old Fashioned Day. Uh, we'll have a few more details on that. So remember that date. And then also the 28th uh, at 6 p.m., we'll be having... Uh, Rick, Rick Strickland here as our special music that night at 6 p.m. So spread the word concerning that. If you flip over there, you'll see some basic items that need that I've shared with y'all that I'll be leaving for Kentucky Wednesday morning to go up to Hazard County in a very uh, destructive, I mean, it's awful there. A lot of lives been lost, be taking some food, be taking the message of Jesus Christ there. And I'll be back, Lord willing, Friday night. If you want to donate there, uh, we can drop it off here at the church. Uh, me, Mickey, and Ellen, or one of us will be here from Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. need to try to get all, all that in by 1 o'clock Tuesday if you want to donate for that as I'll be getting a truck loaded and, and headed up to Lexington uh, that early that next morning to, to start out up there. 
Of course, I always remember youth choir practice tonight at uh, 5 o'clock. Of course, youth choir practice is every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And, of course, Bible study, deacons meeting uh, this week also or next week, the 11th. So a lot going on. Is there something I probably missed? Yes. Yes, I got this right here. Remember Caleb and Kendall, uh, they got a shower here Sunday, August the 14th at 2 p.m., so remember that, uh, that special date. So that's at 2 o'clock, the 14th here at the church, all right, and that's for the wedding shower, all right. Anything else? About the one call. I got so many calls, I don't even know what one call will be. Okay. Oh, if you're not receiving a one-call message or have changed your phone number, just let me or, or let Ellen and Mickey know, and they'll get it. I know we've had a few that have stopped receiving calls. If you hit that wrong, that out, that out button, then it takes you automatically off. And I think also if you don't answer it for certain many times, and, and I know there again, if it hears if it hears any noise in the background, it's going to start over. So uh, just if, if you want, or if you want your name added. I mean, you don't even have to be a member here. If you want the events here to come to your phone and prayer request at your phone of what's going on here at the church, just uh, see Mickey and Ellen give you your phone number. Uh, we don't sell them, so don't worry about that. We ain't going to give your number out to nobody else. Okay. Is that it? All right. All hearts cleared. That's a good-looking crowd out there. You know that. All right. This time we got to thank you. Set me free. At this time, we're going to have, they, as the choir works their way down, we're going to have a congregational hymn as we all stand at this time. Everybody will stand. We're going to sing Higher Ground. It's number 462 if you want to find it in your hymn book.
seated this time. We could at this time have our ushers come forward. Just a little bit of technical difficulty. Cindy's not able to hear right. Jenny's singing, so we've got to get that corrected over there. So that's why the music's off just a little bit, but it's all good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come into your house this morning. Uh, dear Lord, I'd like you to um, put the words in the preacher's heart so that he might be able to bring the message to us and uh, us benefit and be able to go out here and, and, and tell people of you and your word. And dear Lord, as we uh, come to you, we'd like you to bless this offering so that we might be able to use it the furtherment of your kingdom and use it wisely. And all these things I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Me like what you talking about, preacher? Like, I don't know. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Amen. This time we have some special music. Girls, if you want to come up this morning, right after our special music, we'll have uh, children's church. All of our children, five to seven, need to go with Melanie uh, when we get done with our special music.
going to continue to work on that a little bit? Just continue to work on that, girls, and if they get it up, we'll get y'all back on up here at this time. we got one more special song this morning. It's all good. Even whenever technology fails, God's still on the throne and God's still in control. Amen. And I just praise the Lord for that. Sister Jenny, you can. So yours is on the computer too. Okay. Is Jenny's up or not? So nothing's up, everything's down. All right. Technology at its best. That's why I always say, my brother, have your Bible hard copy in your hand. Amen. Well, we're going to move on with the service of children, Children's Church, 5 to 7. There's Miss Melanie. Follow her back to the back. All our kids. Amen. It is good to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. And the message worked out just right because actually the message I'm looking at today is a doorway of hope. A doorway of hope out of Hosea. So if you got your Bibles, turn to chapter 2. Chapter 2, and we're going to look at a couple verses this morning. And I want you to think about a door of hope today. Are you here this morning? And maybe you're in a predicament or a situation where it looks like there's no hope. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, there is no hope without God. Amen. And I hope you get some encouragement from the message today. Got several notes here, several backgrounds uh, to this book of Hosea here. But as we pick up in the very first verse there, we find here, we know this is a parallel here. We see Hosea here, and we see his wife here. We see God here, and we see Israel here. So keep that in mind this morning. That first word that we see in chapter uh, 2 here of verse 14, that first word is therefore. And I've always said it, you've always heard me. Anytime you see the word therefore in the Bible, you need to stop and see why it's there for. <laughs> There's a reason why God put it in there because a lot here has happened in chapter 1 of Hosea. And up to this point in chapter 2 and in verse 14, it says, Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. Verse 15, And I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. I underlined that in my Bible there because that really spoke to me for a, a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you once again for just another day. Another day of being here in your house, Lord. Many today was unable to get up this morning. Many today has passed on to eternity, Lord. But, Father, we found favor today that you give us the health and strength to be back in your house, Lord, to come here, not by chance, Lord, but to come here to worship you, Father. And I thank you for the priorities, Father, and your people this morning, Lord, that seen fit and seen it necessary and seen the importance of coming to God's house as we're living in the last of the last days, Lord. And I pray now, Father, if there's one here today, Lord, that has a shattered life, uh, that sees a, a ray of, of no hope, Lord, that, Father, we find hope in the message today, Lord. And as always, that hope is found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, speak through me because I'm just an old vessel of clay, Lord. Let the words that come out of my heart today, Father, be from the sweet Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. And, Father, we ask all this in Christ's name and all of God's children said, we see here, this is Jose talking here to his wife. We find in this book here that there are 14 precious great chapters here in the book of Hosea. We know here that uh, Hosea was a prophet of God. And Hosea here is speaking to his wife in chapter 2 and verse 15. And he promises her if he if you will come back to me, I will take your valley of Achor here of, uh, uh, and turn it into a door of what? Of hope. 
If you will study the valley there of Achor, it's located in the northeast corner of the land of Jericho. There's not a whole lot that we find that you find that's said in the Bible about the valley. As a matter of fact, only a few uh, verses makes references to it at all. If you if would go over to that valley of Achor today, over there in Israel, there has never been a city, there's never been a town, there's never been a village there that's ever been settled in that section. Even up to today, uh, there are three types of what you might call landscaping there. This valley here that's made up, that first portion as you're going into that valley there, it's very rocky and it's very hilly uh, portion of land there. Then as you move on closer down into that valley there into the center, you find that there's blow, blowed up mounds of dirt there like it's been blown up by the desert winds. But then as you go down into that valley, down into the bottom of this valley, you will find some greenery. You will uh, we'll find, you might say, some lushness down there. That's where people, they would take their sheep and they would take the goats and, and would stop uh, down in the bottom of that valley so that they could graze and eat the valley of Achor. Think about that. That word Achor, I looked that up, that means uh, to be in trouble. That means to be muddy. It means to be dejected. It means to be dirty. And Hosea here was saying to his wife, and God here, there again, this parallel was saying to Israel, I know you're filthy, and I know you're dirty, and I know that you're in trouble because sin always gets you in trouble. Amen. It does. But he made her an offer here that, uh, uh, that, uh, that to me could not be refused. I'll take your valley of trouble, and I will turn it into what? A door of hope. Think about that this morning. Are you in a valley of trouble this morning? Are you in a position in your life right now? Well, I'm here to tell you, God can take that valley and it can be your hope. Amen. I'm so thankful this morning and glad in a day of great negativity and in a great day that I get phone call after phone call of broken hearts and broken relationships, and discouraged them. I'm glad today that, that, that listen, in this day, uh, that I have a day of hope, that where so many don't have a day of hope, that I find it in God, and, I, and that God always offers something positive and gives us hope as his children. Amen? If those that are willing to listen, no matter how messed up that they might be, I'm thankful for that, Brother Ronnie. Thankful for that. If you study this valley of Achor, you'll know that there's only a few, this was interesting, few references that really shows us any uh, uh, insight, anything about this area of land and any description of it. In Joshua chapter 7, if you remember, you remember by a man by the name of Achan. Achan was uh, one of the men that was fighting with Joshua. And they were going down to fight in Jericho, which is right here at this valley of Achor. And God had commanded them that they should not touch of anything of what they called the spoil. In other words, the goods, the material things here. In other words, the men of Israel were to do what? They were to go in there and destroy everything and not take any of their tents, any of their money, any of their gold, any of their silver. Uh, that, 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 that was God. That was a commandment here of God. And God promised Joshua that everywhere that they put their feet, that God would give them the victory. So they go down and win the battle, but this man here named Achan done what? He stole a wedge of gold, a part of silver, and some of the Babylonian, you might say, garments, and he brought it back with him and hid them under his tent. And nobody knew it, what he had done except God. And I want you to know this morning, nobody around you may know it, what you may be hidden in your tent, but God knows it. Amen. After this, they, they go to fight the men there at Ai, and 36 men died now. Because, uh, now God had begun to curse what he, he once blessed. The people there went to Joshua and said, I thought God said, hey, that, that he was going to bless us. I thought God said that he was going to bless us and give us victory. Everywhere that we went, everywhere our feet stood. So what does Joshua do? Joshua, he begins to seek the Lord. And the Lord said, my promise was only if, if, if you walked upright before me. 
There is sin in the camp. And it was there that Joshua went through every tribe and every leader. And when he came to Achan, he said to him, Give God the glory, and Achan could not. You know, that's why some people today never say amen. Amen? That's why some people never shout. That's why some people never get excited. You got something hiding in your tent that God knows about. And the Bible said that Joshua commanded that Achan, uh, listen to this, his family and everything that he owns, his tent and even his wife and children were to be brought to the valley of Achor, the valley of trouble. And the Bible says that what? That the elders of Israel gathered stones and they stoned Achan and his wife and his children to death. And when they got done stoning them, they piled everything they owned up on that pile there to the top and burn it till it was nothing but ashes. And then the children of Israel put a pile of stones on top of their graves and their remains to remind them of the judgment of God. That's only one of the few times you find the Valley of Achor. Interesting. Mentioned in the Bible. And the second time is right here. Right here where we're at in chapter 2 here of Hosea. If you read chapter 1 here of Hosea, you would find out why his wife was in trouble. His wife's name was Gomer. Never heard of a woman named Gomer. When I read that, I said Shazam. <laughs> and after they had gotten married and had several children, listen, this Gomer decided to leave her husband and the things of God. There's a lot of Christians today, listen, that have left the things of God. That's why we find ourselves in a mess. He was a prophet of God here, and she left, and the Bible said she became, in a sense, a prostitute. There in the land of Judah, up around the land of Jericho, left her husband, forsook the word of God, walked away from her family, left her children sitting on the couch, waved goodbye to her husband, grabbed her suitcase, and went down the long, dusty road of that word called sin. Now she come to a point here where everything had been shattered. And I've got news for you. When you leave God, everything will become shattered in your life. I'm a testimony of when I was backslidden to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I had a lot of shattered times in my life. He pulled out that chastening whip on me. But I'm thankful that he brought me back. Gomer's life here was in shambles. Her thoughts of prospering and, and being known for her beauty and, and her glory was gone. Nothing but ashes. Her life was at its lowest. A total calamity. Do you have a calamity in your life this morning? But she was married to a prophet. His name was Hosea. Are you aware of the fact at the same time Hosea was prophesying here, also we find Amos and Isaiah and Michael was all, uh, Micah was also pros, uh, uh, prophesying here at the same time preaching? They were what they call, if you study it, contemporaries. They were all living at the same time being voices of what? For God. We need some more voices for God today in our church house. But the tone and style that Hosea uses here is different than any other in the Old Testament. And here's why I say that. When you read these 14 chapters here of Hosea, there was a real literal marriage here that was in a mess, that was in trouble, that was in disarray here, that was in shambles. There was a proph prophetical writing in these 14 chapters. God was showing Israel that he was Hosea and that no matter how many spiritual whoredoms that we see here Israel went after God still loved her and I don't care where you at today in your life listen to me this morning God still loves you and he loves me and I thank the Lord for that goes on you know God still loved her and one day all of her fellows would forsake her she would be brought down to nothing and Israel would come back to God and his everlasting love would accept her in spite of the mess she's in and forgive her and love her and embrace her as his wife. Hey, I'm so glad this morning we've got a God that loves the unlovable. 
I thank the Lord for that this morning. So Hosea writes to his wife here. Hosea has been uh, given here this uh, uh, or inherited a very dark situation in his marriage. It's always dark when a mama runs off and leaves her babies and forsakes the security of her home. Gomer had several little children around her knees, you might say, when she left Hosea. She just uh, forgot about her marriage and turned into the community, you might say, prostitute. Every time you heard her name in the town, she was whining and dining and having a good old time, you might say, with the crowd. It even talks about whoremongers in the Bible. She had even sold her body for a worldly good time and had hit rock bottom in her life. You know, that's how sin starts out. As long as everything's going good, as long as you got something to offer, it's all peachy cream. But once it gets everything you've got from you, it's like the prodigal son. Amen. It'll drop you off in a hog pen somewhere. It will. Listen, from our youngest to our oldest, sin has uh, some 6,000 years of experience on you and me. It knows how to take you away from what's right. It knows how to mess uh, up your life. And it knows how to leave you on the side of the road. So sad was the, con the condition of her lifestyle that eventually a prophet of God went to town only to find his wife standing on a slave block to be sold as a slave. Think about that. But her lifestyle and her name had so much been around the area. In other words, she, everybody knew her. They knew old Gomer here. Knew her reputation that nobody wanted that piece of trash named Gomer. As a matter of fact, when you look in chapter 3 there, in verse 2, Hosea bought her back off the slave block for 15 pieces of silver. Do you see that there? Well, that's half the price of what a slave cost back in that day. She was so looked down on as low down and sorry and dirty, she couldn't even bring half the price of a slave. At least Judah sold out Jesus for the price of a slave, 30 pieces of silver. Amen. But she was so marked and scarred by sin that the highest bid was only 15 pieces of silver. In type, I know that God used uh, this to reveal, you might say, the, the whoredoms, the prostitution of Israel in his, in his love for them. How he can love her when nobody else does. That's the character of God. You know that. God can love you when nobody loves you. I found that a many a time in my ministry. When you've been tore down and hated on and talked about, listen, guess what? God still loves you and me. Thank you, Lord. God can love you even when you don't even love yourself. That's my God. That's the God of the Bible. He is real when everybody else is fake. So Hosea here, he sends word to her. I love this. And he said, I got an offer. I, I want to make you, even though you've done me wrong and did all this stuff, I got an offer. I know you're in the valley of trouble. I know you don't have a, a, a change of clothes. I, I know your reputation. I know your worth is the price, uh, half the price of a slave. You don't have anywhere to lay your head. You don't have any food on your table. You don't have any peace in your heart. No joy in your life. So here in verse 14 is where we pick up. Hosea sends this letter to her, and he says here in verse 14, I will allure you. I will allure her. You see that? And I got to thinking about that word there, allure. It means to entice. It means to flatter. It means to persuade. It means to open wide, open your arms as to accept somebody. Here's what he's saying. Listen, you're a long way off from me. And, and you are really messed up. And this word allure here is where we get the word uh, lure for a fishing lure, Wayne. We love to fish. Who loves to fish? I do. But if you're messed up, he said, you're a far off from me. But I'm going to lure you, Gomer, back to me. 
You know what a lure does? You throw it to where the fish is at. The fish don't go to the lure. You go to the fish. Hosea said, you're so messed up, you can't come to me. Oh, me. So I tell you what. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come to where you are, and I'm going to lure you. I'm going to put something glorious in front of you. Hallelujah, that the Lord came to me and put something glorious in front of me. And it was his son, Jesus Christ, that I would come to him. Lures sparkle. I've got some sparkly ones in my tackle box. They put off light. They shine. They're attractive. Hosea said here, I don't owe you anything. But I'm going to show myself attractive to you. I'm going to lure you. And when you come close to me, I'm going to set the hook in you. And I'm going to pull you back to me. Hey, ain't you glad that we serve a God? I'm glad that I serve a God. That when, uh, when I couldn't get to him, he came to where I was. He put a hook in my heart, brother. And he started reeling me in, drawing him to him. Thank you, Lord, for that. In my old rebellious state, hallelujah, he never throwed me away. He said, I'm going to lure you. I'll put something in, in you that you'll make you, you want to come back to me. And I can hear Gomer now saying, I can't come back. All I got is sadness and sorrow. Look at my reputation. Look at what I've done. I've destroyed my family. I've given everything a bad name. I'm thankful today for Jesus Christ. He said, I got an answer. Verse 14, I'm going to take you out in the wilderness. And in verse 15, he says, I'm going to give, I'm going to give you what? Vineyards from thence. You know what vineyards are in the Bible? You ever done any study on that? It's a type of joy. It's happiness. It's a type of celebration. It's a type of reunion. Hosea said here, not only am I going to uh, pull you back, but I, I'm going to take you out into the wilderness. I, I'm, getting, I, I'm getting you away from the, your former lovers, and I'm getting you away from all the gossip. I'm getting you away from all the scars and all the heartbreak and all the torness. I'm getting you away from all the shame. I'm getting you away from all the regrets, and I'm going to give you the wine of gladness. We're going to celebrate. I'm going to bring you to me. It's going to be a time of joy. It's going to be a time of gladness. It's going to be celebration time here. Then he said in verse 14, I will speak comfortably unto thee. Think about those words. I will speak comfortably unto thee. Don't you know as a messed up woman coming back to her husband, she's been used, she's been abused and mocked and laughed at and made fun of, sold like a slave, don't you know that the average man like me, I'm talking about myself here, would have met her with a voice of, I told you so. You got exactly what you deserved. You should have listened to me when I told you what you're you doing. Look at that mess you've made of our, our family name and of our lives. Look at the mess you've made out of your life. But you know what? He said, I want you to know if you come home, if you'll let me pull you back to the house, we're not only going to have joy and gladness. We're not only going to celebrate. We're going to let the past be the past. I'm not bringing up what you've done, what you did. That's behind us. I ain't going to do it. But my, my, ain't today as even professing Christians, we're good at bringing up people's past. We're good at reminding them instead of uplifting them and saying, just like we've been forgiven, God can forgive you and you've been forgiven. And the things of the, the, all those thoughts in our minds should be put behind us and forgot about when we keep bringing them back up like a sore all the time, picking at it. How's anybody ever going to heal if we continue to do that? Think about how God's forgiven us. But we're good at that. I'm going to speak comfortably. I'm going to speak positive. I'm going to speak hope, Gomer. I'm going to speak strength. Oh, yes, I, I'm so glad that I serve a God. My God, when I came to him a long time ago, he never brought up my past. He never brought up what I did do and what I should have done. Amen? Amen. 
He'll never bring up your past, but he'll talk about your future. And if you're here this morning and you're down and out, listen, quit looking behind you. you got a fresh start in Jesus Christ and look forward to your future, what he has for you. Think about that. I'll speak comfortably unto you. But you don't know where I've been, Preacher Mike. I don't. I don't care. But I messed up. Well, we've all messed up. And if you're here this morning and say you ain't messed up, you're lying. Get up here and repent. I'll mess up this week. I'll mess up before the day's over. It doesn't matter how far gone you are, you know. You know, I looked it up. Did you know the word gomer, that word means to come to your end. It means uh, fall uh, till you hit bottom. In other words, a completeness. In other words, she had done completed the cycle. She was at rock bottom here. Here's a woman who's come to the end of her rope, fallen so far down at the bottom of the ocean, and here comes this guy named Hosea. And you know what Hosea means? The offer of salvation. Here's a woman on the bottom. She's been everywhere. She's done everything. Nobody wants anything to do with her. A slave owner don't even want her. But I tell you, she's hit rock bottom. She uh, has nowhere to go and nobody to care. All of a sudden, somebody stands up. His name is Salvation. He said, I love you just the way you are. And I'm here to tell you this morning, wherever you're at in your life, there's Jesus. He's on the throne. He's right here today. I don't care where you're at in your life. I love you. Come to me, and I will give you rest. I'll take you just like you are. Thank you, Lord. Now, here's what I want to show you. The last thing he offered her was a door of hope. I said I underlined that in my Bible. Listen, we're living in a day with so much hate, so much negativity in our society. And there's a lot of it with even in church congregations and in life, and in our families, and in our finances, and in our health. It's so good to know that our God always opens a door of hope. No matter how far somebody might be, I want to share a few things about the door, and then we're going to go get out of here and go get something to eat. The doorway of hope, that is what got on me. Number one, who is this door? Who claimed in the Bible to be a door? Did you know out of all uh, 66 books of the Bible, there's only one time in all the Bible that anybody ever stood up and said, I'm the door? Only one time because there's only one door. Jesus stood up and said in John chapter 10. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Do you see that? Pull up verse 9 too. 10 and 9 there. I am what? The door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find what? Pastor. I love that. He didn't say he was a door. He said he is the door. I'm going to tell you the only hope that I can offer you this morning, I don't care how messed up you are, Jesus is right for whatever is wrong in your life today. And all you have to do is open the door. Do you know that? It's been said by some Catholics that the Pope has the key to heaven. You know what my answer is to that? He can have it because I got the door to heaven, which is Jesus. Amen? I love it. I didn't need the key. I got the door. I've got Jesus. And I'll just capitalize that, that, honey. I've got Jesus. And the only way that, that you get out of the mess you're in, and the only way you get a new beginning, you've got to come to Jesus. You don't come to a denomination. You don't come to a church. You don't come to a baptistry. You don't come to turn over a new leaf. You must come through the door one door the only door Jesus he's your only hope number two what does the door have to offer if I'm in a valley of trouble and I'm all messed up in my life what's going to change if I just walk through a door well I began thinking about that because I'd done building inspections 
about walking through a door. And you go through a door because the rest of the house has the walls around it. And walls are, are, are for dividing. Walls are for separation. And you can't walk through a wall. Amen? So God instituted and invented something called a door. And that door gives you an opportunity to do what? To bypass what's separating you and come in and have fellowship and communion with what's going on on the inside. I hope you're getting this this morning. You see, we're surrounded by a wall of depravity. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians that we are separated from God. There's a wall of separation. God is holy and we're sinful. We're eternally separated from God and that's, you might say, the wall, that wall that, that, that's between us and God. There's no possible way we could get through that wall and get back to God. I don't care how good you are, what you've done, anything else. So what did God do? God sent the door, Jesus, into the world to die for our sins. And now whosoever will, cut will can now come up to that wall. We don't have to look at that wall. God has supplied the door. And now we can enter in. Amen. Amen. You know, when the ark was built, it had one door. When God built the tabernacle, there was one door. When God built the temple, there was only one door. When the sheep entered into the sheephold, there was only one door. It doesn't matter how tall the wall is or how thick it is and how messed up you are. If you'll come to Jesus, he can get you inside and get you in fellowship and relationship with his heavenly father. Do you believe that? Yes. Also, when you go through a door, it's an opportunity to close out your past. Amen? Thank you, Lord. You see, I was living in the past. I was living in rebellion. See, I was living on the other side of the wall over here, and, and, and then back in my past, living in sin, being rebellious, and I was feeling around the wall everywhere. And then I'll never forget when Jesus, the sweet Holy Spirit, come to me of conviction and said, Mike, you're in need of a Savior. And I came to that old-fashioned altar, not caring, and finally I come around, and guess what? The door opened, and it was Jesus that let me in. And guess what happened? After that moment, all that passed behind me, all those things where I lived in my past, guess what? It was closed. It was forgotten about. And when I look at that, guess what? God don't see me, but he sees Jesus. It's gone. If that don't get you click, clicker to clicking this morning, something's wrong with you. Amen. This is where you are. If you turn around and look at your past, you can't see it. I pray y'all getting this like I am. Because where I'm at now and where I used to be, there's a door between us. When the old devil says, hey, hey, Mike, why don't you turn around and see what you used to be? I can't see it. All I see is Jesus standing there and reminding me that I'm a child of king. And I'm not what I used to be. I don't have to be what I used to be. I'm a brand new man headed to a brand new place with a brand new city, with a brand new crowd, with a great and mighty Savior. I don't hang around that mess no more. So a door gives you the opportunity to get out of your past. Also, it gives you an opportunity to have a new beginning. It's a fresh start. When I come out of my kitchen into my living room, I'm not looking for a refrigerator, even though I look for it a lot. When I come out of my bedroom into the kitchen, I'm not looking for a toilet in my kitchen. Because why? It's useless to come out of one room and expect the same thing in another room. What if I said you had nine bathrooms, and I actually inspected one, nine bathrooms in an 11-bedroom house. But just say you had a nine-room house that was all bathrooms. Well, who wants to go from one bathroom to another bathroom? You may if you eat Chinese food. But other than that, you don't want that. You see, when you come through a door, it's because you got a new beginning. I've left the kitchen because now I want to relax. Now I go, what, into the living room. You see, God not only takes your past, but in taking your past, listen to me, he offers you a brand new beginning. You don't have to leave here like you came this morning. Amen. That's on you. 
God has a lot more to offer you than you ever dreamed of. And then also it's for protection. What's the last thing at night? A lot of wives ask their husbands when you get in the bed. I know I get asked a lot of times. Did you close the garage door or did you lock the door? Is the doors locked? Because if the door was locked, then you're what? Protected from whatever is outside. Amen. I knew between me and something that would hurt me was a door that would stop it. Like that coyote that was at my back door the, this week or last week. You know, when you, you get born again and you stepped in a new life with Jesus, you got an enemy, brother. You do. And that enemy is bigger than you, and it's bigger than me. He's more powerful than you. He's after every one of us. You know that. But all I need to know is that the door been shut. All I need to know is that God is on my side. All I need to know is that Jesus is at the gateway of my life. And no matter what's happening outside, I am protected, friend, by my Lord. And I close with this. I've done a little studying on eagles, and you may have heard this before, because the Bible tells us in Scripture uh, over there in Isaiah 40 and 31. You got that pulled up there. I love this right here, to be renewed in our strength like eagles. He talks about that. Isaiah 40 and 31. Is that coming up back there? If not, you can mark it in your Bibles and read it later. You know about being rare it is. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And I got to thinking about that. Have you ever studied eagles? I did a little bit of uh, uh, research on this. Did you know that eagles come from the same family as a falcon and a condor? And an eagle can live to be 20 to 30 years old, and you can hardly tell the difference in a 3-year-old and a 20-year-old. They can fly over 100 miles an hour, dive at over 120 miles an hour, and they can pick up a baby kangaroo by his shoulders, which I thought that was interesting, lift it up, break its back right in midair. That's strong. But even though they are from the same family as a falcon and condor, the falcons and the condors hate them. One reason they hate them, eagles don't fly in groups. Falcons and condors a, are a in-the-click, you might say, bird and have to be accepted by the crowd. Listen to me. An eagle don't give a hoot what you think about him. He just soon fly by himself. He don't need you. He don't need your approval. Think about that. I'm going some forward with this. He don't need you patting him on the back. An eagle coast and glide, I thought this was interesting, 89% of his life he coasts and glides because he's learned if he yields to the wind, he don't have to flap his wings all the time like all the other birds. So he just yields there and flies. He's the only bird in the world that flies toward the storm instead of away from the storm because as he flies to it, the wind begins to blow and blow and guess what it does? That wind picks him up and lifts him up over those storms when he gets to it. But there's something else. An eagle has something built in their body. This was interesting. That no other bird in the world has. It's a great protection here for the eagle. They fly by themselves so many times they're surrounded by, you might say, the enemy there. And when an eagle is flying by himself and the falcons and the condors come around him, diving at him, squawking at him, telling him, you're going down, you're outnumbered, there's nobody here to protect you, you're going down. And you'll never make it back home. We're here to get you. But an eagle has something that no other bird with, with, has had, would have, in the world has. He has in built in set of sunglasses. Think about that. He's the only bird in the world that when he looks at the sun, it doesn't hurt his eyes. But tinted membranes come out of the corner of those eagles' eyes and covers his eyeballs. He's the only bird in the world that can fly directly in to the sun without it affecting his eyesight at all. So while he's out there flying, doing his own thing, and the enemy surrounds him, guess what? And says, you're going down this time, big boy. He don't open his mouth. He don't argue with them. He don't answer them on uh, Facebook. He don't read their Twitter account. 
All he knows is one thing. If, the, if there's nothing between him and that sun, if he'll fly directly toward the sun, if he'll fly directly toward the sun, the falcon can't see him. The condor can't see him. Think about that. They're wondering, where's that eagle at? He's a flying toward the sun. And I got news for you this morning. Just as that eagle was flying toward that S-U-N, it reminds me of the S-O-N. Amen? And I want to tell you this morning, when the demons of hell get after you, don't even listen to them, don't even respond to them, don't even read what they're writing. You keep your eyes on Jesus. You keep flying. You keep looking to the S-O-N, and he will deliver you. Amen. So remember that thought this morning. Wherever you at, remember, remember, remember our only door, the door of hope, just as we see here as Jose took back Gomer and all that she had done to put the past behind them. I want you to know this morning, whatever is in your way right now, we serve a God that is the door of hope that is here for you, to forgive you, receive you, restore you, and make you the best that you could ever be through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Father, we do come to you once again today, Lord. A message I needed in my heart, Lord. Uh, you know it all about it, Lord. And Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, for each individual here today, Father. I believe there's those here today, Father, that's not here by chance, not just coming to church on this day, Father. But, Father, the message, Father, has penetrated that heart, Lord. And I pray today, Father, if there's one here that is broken, Father, one that does uh, think about their past, Lord, I pray that they would come to an old-fashioned altar and just put it behind them, Lord. Father, you're there. And, Father, just like Hosea, Lord, took back Gomer, just like we see so many times as Israel Sinned against God. God was there willing to receive them back and restore them, Father. Lord, I pray that you would move in whatever way, Lord. And pray today that we would always remember, Lord, that you are the, the, the door of hope. And we ask all of us in Christ's name, amen. As we all stand at this time, do you have a need this morning? Come with me. Let's pray at this altar. I'm going to be right here praying once again this week that God will put someone in front of me to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Whatever's on your heart this morning, whatever it may be, let us come at this time and pray.
close this morning. God is good, ain't he? All the time. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for that door of hope we had. <laughs> no matter what it looks like around us today, I'm putting my full faith and trust in him. And I'm trusting only in him. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Continue to pray for me, and I'll continue to pray for you. I want us to be a light here on 632 McCrimmon Road that shines for the gospel, that shines for Christ. I want us to be a testimony for him. And it all starts with each and every one of us. We've all got something to do for the Lord. Amen. I appreciate y'all once again for being here today. Remember this afternoon's services, choir practice at 5 o'clock, service at 6 o'clock. Just be in much prayer for one another. Also, remember the, the sheets are back there. The positions are open to serve in this church. Every position, if you would feel led, I pray that you will. We need some other people stepping up to start taking some positions and start going and being faithful to the house of God. From the young people all the way down to our seniors, we've got to be about God's business. Get you one of them sheets, sign it up, give it to me or give it to one of our deacons. And probably looking at this week because we've got to move forward with it to get this stuff completed. Because a new church year is right here in our back door waiting. All hearts cleared? Amen. I just pray that y'all be in much prayer for me. Yes, Renee. Uh, if you haven't been in the Hillside Church here today, will there not be up front one of those Anybody that wants to participate in the hee-haw show, meet Renee up front. All right. There again, any goods to go to Kentucky, be here at the church. You can bring them today or you can bring them tomorrow between uh, 9 and 1. If you got any other things, you can call me and let me know. Be in much prayer for that, that trip up there. Safety there is, is devastation. Roads out, everything else. Just be in much prayer for the gospel to be shared and hearts to be touched and, and lives to be just ministered to because they need it this time. But you know what? As, as great a need is up there, there's just as much need right around here. You know that. Sure is. All right, all hearts clear. Brother Robbie, if you would, close us in prayer.